the Tawana Powell Lecture featuring a special economic leadership forum. We have a wide range of economic experts with us today. Joining our panel is Sheila Baer, Chairman of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, uh, Sheila Krauchuk, who is the President of Global Wealth and Investment Management at the Bank of America, and Christina Roma, recent uh, Chairman of the President Obama's Council of Economic Advisors. Um, our moderator for tonight is Professor Lori Taylor, who is a faculty member of our very own George Bush School here at Texas A&M. Dr. Taylor has a PhD in economics. She served with the Fe uh, Federal Reserve in Dallas and is also an expert on local and state government. So you see we have a good range of experts with us that can deal with the economy. And of course, the subject matter for tonight is the state of the U.S. economy and ways that we can uh, tackle some of the challenges that that economy faces. Uh, before we begin our program, I'd like to recognize Don and Tawana Powell. It is through their generosity that this program is possible tonight. In addition, I'd like to thank them for their continued support of the Library Center. And I'm glad to see that Don and Tuan are here with us. Thank you very much. Our program is being live streamed on the web today. So I extend a special uh, welcome to all our web viewers. And I notice we have a lot of students. I'm glad to see we have so many students taking advantage of tonight's program. It promises to be very exciting. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Professor Lori Taylor and the panelists. I want to thank you all very much for coming this evening to the Tuana M. Powell Lecture featuring an economic leadership forum with three very prominent and distinguished uh, members of the economic community, leaders in uh, a variety of fields. Uh, we have uh, Chairman Sheila Baer, who is the chairman of the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. Uh, we have uh, Sally Krawcheck who is with us as president and CEO of Global Financial Management for Bank of America, and Dr. Christine Romer, who recently served as the President's Council for Economic Advisors Chair and is currently serving as a professor from UC Berkeley. Uh, thank you very much for um, attending and listening to their what promised to be very interesting and engaging conversation. The plan for this evening is that each of the, the panelists will provide you with five to 15 minutes of opening remarks, uh, followed by some brief summary on my part, and a few conversation starters to try and spark uh, interchange amongst this very talented group of folks who, quite frankly, haven't had a chance to talk to each other before <laughs> about economic issues. And so after they've had a chance to uh, exchange ideas, we'd like to open the floor to you all to also ask questions of the panelists. When you ask questions, you may direct them to a specific member of the panel or to the panel as a whole. And thank you all very much for coming. And thank you, Chairman Bear. By alphabetical order, you get to go first. <laughs> Well, I will be closer to 5 than 15 because I think uh, it's uh, the interchange of views and then questions from the audience. I would very much look forward to, to having an interaction with the audience as well. So given the topic of economic leadership uh, for this panel, I, I thought to myself, well, what is the government's role in, in providing economic leadership? And uh, I'm a traditional uh, conservative. I'm a lifelong Republican. I'm from the Midwest. Uh, I believe in markets. I'm, I'm basically a capitalist at heart. So I guess... My first reaction to that is, well, the market should really drive the economy, not the government. The government clearly has a role to play, but, but first and foremost, uh, the market should drive the economy. But the government obviously has a role to play. 
Uh, I, you know, Adam Smith, uh, the father of modern capitalism, I think understood more than anyone that uh, market participants really don't like competition. At the end of the day, you have robust competition. It creates a, it narrows your profit margins, right? It puts downward pressure on prices, and that's a good thing for consumers and the public generally, but not necessarily a good thing uh, for market participants. So the government has always had a role in setting some basic rules of the road to make sure that we do have uh, robust uh, competition in the market. And that manifests itself most obviously in the antitrust enforcement, and that's been a key role of government for many, uh, for many decades. But I think it also uh, provides a role for government in terms of making sure that market participants have the information they need to make intelligent choices. And in that regard, I think it's most important uh, with the, the consuming public, the, the so-called retail consumer in the, in the area of financial products, to make sure that they have the information, that they can understand the product they're getting and what they're paying for it. because. Uh, that is the only way that we will have a true efficient allocation of resources, people understanding exactly what they're paying for and what they're getting. So with financial services, we had a breakdown in that basic uh, function of government, I believe. I don't think there were uh, adequate rules of the road to provide consumers of, of financial services with understanding how their mortgages work, how their credit cards work. Uh, and, uh, and I think, especially in the mortgage area, that had a, this had a very negative impact on uh, what we ended up uh, seeing with the mortgage crisis because a lot of people got mortgages that they just simply didn't understand. Now, there were some that did understand them and knew they were taking risks, but we as a regulator, I've seen many, many cases, far too many cases where people just didn't understand that they had a very complex payment shock mortgage that was dependent on home prices continuing to rise. And once home prices were no longer rising, they couldn't get out of these mortgages, they couldn't refinance. And, and millions have now tragically uh, lost their homes. So I think rule writer, that setting the basic rules of the road is a key role for government in terms of making sure the, econo the economy works uh, in a market-based system as it should. I think the second area where government interacts uh, with the economy and where hopefully it, it uh, does so responsibly is in the uh, allocation of resources. Now government obviously sometimes subsidizes for certain parts of the economy. Most notably uh, recently in housing, we were providing a lot of subsidies to housing. And I think there that, again, uh, fed into uh, the crisis that we uh, ultimately had in the housing market uh, because uh, particularly with the uh, government-sponsored enterprises that were providing a lot of fuel, a lot of credit, uh, oh, the place was a wash in credit, very easy to get loans to buy, uh, to buy mortgages, that uh, this ended up skewing resources toward housing and away from perhaps other areas where we needed, you know, uh, with, the, uh, uh, with the economy, with infrastructure, with manufacturing, with IT. There's a lot of uh, places in our economy that, that need uh, efficient allocation of capital, but a lot was being sent into housing because government, frankly, was encouraging that through providing a lot of subsidies. Government was also providing implicit and explicit subsidies to the financial sector through what we call the too big to fail doctrine. So a lot of folks who are investing or extending credit to very large financial institutions assumed that those institutions would never be allowed to fail by the government. So this encouraged them to put money into these institutions, feeling that they had a safe pet. And it also uh, created incentives for excessive risk taking because as investors and creditors thought, well, if you take a lot of risk and the risk pays off and you make a lot of money, I'm going to make a lot of money. And if your risks don't pay off and you lose money, well, the government's going to take ownership of that. And that, in point of fact, is what happened. And that is why I think the bailouts were, were such a dangerous precedent, perhaps necessary. I think they were necess necessary in retrospect to stabilize the system. But going forward, uh, they are a very, very dangerous uh, thing because it reinforced too big to fail. Uh, and again, misallocated resources toward the financial sector and created incentives for risk taking that proved to be quite harmful. And this is one of the reasons why the FDIC, as part of uh, the financial reform package, put a premium on making sure the government going forward had tools to effectively resolve large financial institutions in a way that imposed attendant losses on shareholders and creditors, not on the taxpayer in an effort, not only because it's the right thing to do, but we needed to restore market discipline to the financial services sector, and we are in, in the process of implementing those rules now. And I think this will, for long-term stability, will, will be a, a key, uh, a key uh, improvement in our economic health and our longer-term viability. I think, finally, government has a role as, uh, as role model. In, uh, in the economy. Uh, you know, I think government should be run like a business, uh, and I think probably recently <laughs> it's, it's not done a good job of running itself as a business. Uh, I try to run the FDIC as a business. We always have an eye towards the bottom line. Uh, we resolve uh, failing banks, at least cost to the government. Uh, we uh, market them aggressively. We do impose losses on shareholders and, uh, and unsecured creditors uh, when, when banks fail. 
And we, I'm very proud of the fact that we've not had to borrow one penny from taxpayers as we've worked our way through this crisis. And, uh,